What is up everybody? Today we are going to be attempting to fix the idling issue on the E30. All that in today's episode. My name is Ryan. This is Project Race Car. Let's get into it. So a lot of you guys have seen the E30 start up uh, and Greta sounds like a cammed V8, uh, but there are stock cams in this K24 uh, and it should not sound as lopey as it does. So. Uh, it is a very rough idle, and I have been trying to figure out what has been going on off camera uh, with the E30 before I bring this video to you guys. So I am very new to uh, the standalone ECU and the E30 just in engine swaps in general. So um, this is my first engine swap, uh, and so we are just learning as we go. So um, with that comes just a lot of different issues that you just have to work through. So one of the issues that I found is that Greta was running super rich uh, and I looked at the uh, O2 sensor in the Link ECU and it wasn't actually reading. So I figured that the best way uh, to fix that is to install a CAN Lambda sensor on the ECU. So we got a nice fancy CAN Lambda sensor uh, and basically that will read the air to fuel ratio uh, in a very accurate uh, time frame uh, and be able to communicate with the ECU. So I will actually put the clips of me installing the Link Can Lambda right here uh, so that you guys can kind of see the process. It's really straightforward and pretty easy uh, and we got it working and we found out that the E30 is running super rich. It is running at a 0.7 Lambda uh, and it's not even hitting the 8.8 that we are trying to target. So that is an issue. So I was able to get the car running a little bit better, but let's see how it sounds currently. Quite aggressive. So you guys can hopefully hear just still the rough idle. Uh, I'm hoping that this wideband sensor uh, is able to actually fix that. Uh, and the car will be running a little bit better. Okay, so with the Link Can Lambda kit, um, you are going to get this piece uh, and the O2 sensor, right? Uh, the thing that's actually reading. So naturally this will go in the exhaust uh, and then it will plug into the other side of this Can Lambda sensor. You are going to also order this piece um, and I unfortunately ordered the wrong one. Uh, this is a five pin. Uh, my ECU, the uh, my HC20X, is a four pin. Um, so I ordered the wrong cord. Uh, the other one is coming in the mail. Uh, so that will go onto the other side and actually plug it into the ECU. Uh, and then it will all be connected, right? That's all we really need. Uh, we will just need a power and a ground. Uh, and that is the only thing that we actually need to wire. Everything else is just completely plugged in. So hopefully this is a enough proof uh, to show you guys that it is running quite terribly rich. Um, so this is probably indicating that these spark plugs are going to also be very sooted. So uh, I will need to replace those as well um, when I actually get the Lambda all hooked up. But yeah, this is a brand new sensor. This is like straight up just off of idle. So um, <laughs> quite terrible. So Link uh, with the kit also uh, sends you a nice Bosch sensor and this is a different one than the one that I had in so I probably had the wrong one in but that's okay. You know, you live and you learn. So I think with the actual amount of wiring that I have, uh, I'm just going to send the O2 sensor through uh, this hole. Uh, I'm going to drill it out a little bit uh, and make sure that that fits. Um, and then we will just plug it in up here and then have the Link uh, Can Lambda sensor up in the glove box area. So I think that that's the best route um, rather than trying to uh, wire it up here. Um, we will just do a full send and drill out the hole in the trans tunnel. Okay, so we have the Lambda plug-in for the ECU, and this one, since it comes with the four, it already comes uh, pre-wired. So I'm gonna make sure that this is the uh, correct plug-in and that all the wires are in the correct spot. So we are gonna pull the ECU and then pull off the case. So with our ECU uh, and the case off, uh, it should just be as simple 
as just popping this in, moving the wire over to the hole, right? And then popping the cover back on and then plugging everything in. Okay, so uh, we should have everything all set up. And if you look at the Lambda One, we are running off of the link can. Uh, and so hopefully if we go to start it right now, it should be running a lot better. So let's uh, hope for the best. Now, okay, that didn't work because uh, I had plugged into the can Lambda 2 and uh, was trying to read off of the can Lambda 1. So, okay, let's try this now. Hopefully this will actually read. hope that this was the fix. Ready? Damn it! Okay, so this should be correct now. The uh, It's actually reading a lambda, um, and so I don't know if it's actually reading properly, but uh, we have it set up, so we are going to try to start the car. Uh, I'm gonna do one ECU cycle, so I'm just going to uh, turn off power, wait 30 seconds, uh, maybe a minute, kinda reload everything and try to start it up. Okay, we're gonna try again, so you guys can see the Lambda's reading. And I'm just gonna reach over and start the car. Why does it lose signal? Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see how rich it's running. That's ridiculous. Okay, we're gonna lean it out a little bit. So now that I know that what the car is actually reading, uh, I can make accurate decisions on what is going on. So um, the issue before was that I didn't know how rich it was, I didn't know how lean it was, so I didn't want to make corrections, uh, especially since I'm new to this, that are going to mess stuff up. So now we can dial back a lot of fuel um, and hopefully try to fix this idle. So now that you guys are up to date on uh, the Link Can Lambda, you guys can see that it didn't change the idle at all. Um, and so the car is still running super rough and I was able to see that the Link ECU saw that it was running rich, uh, but wasn't correcting it properly. So that brings us to right now and what I have figured out with the E30. Like I said, I am very new to this, uh, and so this is all a new process. So uh, I didn't properly lock in the Link ECU timing, so the crankshaft is reading a different timing mark than the ECU is trying to command. Uh, and if they aren't properly reading each other, uh, then the ECU is gonna make corrections uh, and it will be off from the actual crankshaft. So obviously this is a very rookie mistake, but like I said, I'm still learning with this, so hopefully I can teach you guys to not make the same mistake. Okay, so if you look down here on the actual crankshaft pulley, you guys can see that there are uh, four dots, um, or four lines, I guess. Uh, and the one in the white should be top dead center, but we are going to verify that. Um, and we are gonna make sure that the ECU knows that that is where we are hitting the TDC. So from my understanding in the ECU settings, it comes either factory at a zero degrees or a 10 degrees before top dead center. Um, and so that's stored in the ECU um, because that's just a default. So you have to tell the ECU what your correct uh, engine timing is and that's gonna be uh, different for everybody, right? So what we are gonna do now is we are gonna find where the piston is at top dead center, uh, find what marking we are trying to look at uh, and then see how far off the ECU is actually uh, reading compared to the crankshaft. I know this is confusing, just hang in with me. 
Okay, so I have a dipstick. Uh, I pulled out the spark plug of the cylinder number one because uh, you're most likely going to have top dead center for cylinder number one. So that's what it's normally based off of. And we are just going to watch this. And I'm going to just turn the, it over on the crank. And you can see that the dipstick is being pushed out. Right here, we are going to see that the dipstick starts going down. So um, that means that it has passed top dead center. And if we line it up, uh, top dead center lines up with this first marking that I painted white. So uh, we just verified that that is uh, the actual top dead center and it's not that those three little lines. So we now know that that uh, marking is at zero degrees so what we are going to try to do is set the ECU to be locked at zero degrees um, and see if those uh, markings line up because right now it's set at 10 degrees I hope this is all making sense, but this is just the issue that I'm having. I also pulled the spark plug out, um, and these will obviously need to be changed because they are super rich. Um, you guys can see just how rich the car is running, um, and these guys don't look great. So I'm going to pick up a new set of spark plugs, but I'm going to throw this back one in. Uh, just for testing purposes and then we will replace the spark plugs in a later date. In the next video we are going to be pulling this crusty thing apart uh, and seeing what the damage is on the inside of the engine um, and seeing how bad the engine sludge is and where it is spread to. So at the auto parts store uh, I got this uh, basic, it's just a uh, single coil um, and so this we can put in the actual spark plug hole. It was like 20 bucks. Um, and then we will put it on the actual spark plug. Um, and then basically with our timing gun, uh, we can attach it to uh, this lead now uh, and be able to get a actual pulse. So uh, you are going to come into the actual uh, calibration um, of the uh, trigger settings um, so triggers and calibrate um, and then that's going to bring you to set base timing um, now this was at 10 degrees um, but we want it to be at zero so uh, once you complete something you hit enter until it turns blue so say we wanted 10 degrees here we click enter and it would turn blue but we don't want that we want 0, 0.0 at least to test it so um, what I also did was unplugged all of the fuel injectors so we won't be actually spraying any fuel into the uh, cylinders uh, so we aren't going to flood anything and um, I will get somebody to actually crank this over and we will see what um, it's actually reading and if that changed anything. If it does start to match, um, then that is good and we will be able to lock the uh, ignition timing in. Um, I should have done this before I've been even running the vehicle, but mistakes happen when you're new to it. So uh, stuff happens uh, and you can always buy another engine. So. Uh, that's why I enjoy this swap is that uh, even if I blow this motor another one is just 800 bucks so and a uh, long weekend's worth of work so not that I uh, don't care about the engine but um, it won't be the end of the world if say something really bad does happen but we're gonna try to avoid that okay so I had somebody come out uh, a friend and help me uh, set the actual timing uh, I had them crank and uh, I was able to kind of look at the timing marks and then adjust it in the laptop to set it to TDC. I should have done this a long time ago, um, but 
what we have learned is that uh, that has helped the car. Uh, what we have learned also is that that has not fixed the car. Um, now what we need to focus on the actual tuning and getting everything correct. But if we check this out and go... So you guys can see that there's still something a little bit lopey, but I think that it has come a long way and that it sounds a lot better. Um, the thing is, is that it is still running very, very rich. You can feel it in the air. Um, I need to uh, take a break and um, get out of this garage because uh, I feel like I have grade A uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. So. Um, that is going to end it for today's video. I would highly recommend it before you guys run your car, make sure that it is at a set locked in point and that that point is correct. So I know a lot of you guys might be thinking, just bring it to a tuner, tuner. it'll be done really quick. Um, and I understand that, but uh, I do want to learn a lot about this car um, and learn a little bit about tuning. Um, so if I can do that and kind of struggle through it a little bit, um, so that I can use my knowledge uh, on other cars, other builds, uh, and everything like that. Um, that is obviously going to be a good benefit for me to kind of struggle through this. So um, we are going to keep going. And if at any point I feel like I'm done, uh, I can bring it to a tuner and they can fix everything and uh, all that stuff so um, until then we are going to just keep trying to move forward and keep trying to fix the idle uh, and get the car running correctly um, now that we have the lambda sensor uh, and everything all of the ignition uh, timing set and correct um, then we should be just proceeding forward i do think that the car is sounding better it's uh, revving better uh, which is good and so we will um, just keep going. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and in the next video we are going to be doing a teardown of the other K24A2 that we got uh, and we are going to see if that engine is good so make sure to stay tuned, do all the good things, like, comment, and subscribe as it does help me out a ton and until next time my name is Ryan, this is Project Race Car. have an amazing day, peace.